Marcia Davis with the City of Spokane Capital Programs. I'm a senior engineer uh, at the city and the city has been participating as part of the jurisdictions in the Eastern Washington Stormwater Guidance Manual. Our role has been stakeholders and to help develop this and to give feedback. Hazel's Creek is a regional stormwater facility of the city of Spokane. It's also an open area. If you look around on, on this site, this was an area that wasn't developed as the city developed in the Moran Prairie in the south part of Spokane. This became an opportunity for the city as we did uh, some road projects. We discovered this area has some really great stormwater infiltration and so we've made it into a regional stormwater facility. At the same time, there's a lot of open space and the neighbors love it. So we've added on to it an opportunity to demonstrate low impact development techniques. Ferris High School is located adjacent to Hazel's Creek, so it gives us that opportunity to have education for high school students. So we're here at one of the low impact development sites and you can see this is a small a kiosk roof and actually this gutter here diverts the stormwater from the rainwater actually before it becomes stormwater, the rainwater on the roof into this barrel. And you can look down here, it has a spigot that you can empty it out. We have planting here so actually this can be used just to supplement planting. You can see right here in front of me on the ground, this is pervious concrete. We have a couple sites here on Hazel's Creek that we put this pervious concrete is. We wanted to have a demonstration to see both um, for construction techniques and for how it durable it was going to be for what maintenance we would require. So pervious concrete in essence is concrete without fines. It doesn't have sand in it so the water actually flows right through it. Well, this was constructed in 2012. It was finished last fall and what we actually did last fall is we did a test for infiltration and infiltration came out great. It was in the 100 inches per hour range. We're very excited about that. Our plan is to test this every fall for the next few years to, so we can get an idea if the pores are clogging and to see if whatever maintenance we're doing is adequate to keep the sidewalk from, um, from not infiltrating. This is the entrance to Hazel's Creek and we have put drought tolerant plants in this area. And it's so a, a demonstration to show here's some types of plants that will grow well with limited irrigation. Now we do have an irrigation system for this. Right now we're establishing these plants so we want to make sure that they get enough water during the establishment period. As, as these plants get established then we can turn that irrigation down to what they actually will need maybe with just irrigation in the late summers where we don't get any rain. This, you can see this mulch here is, um, is bark and we use that for a couple reasons. One reason is it holds moisture and especially during the summer months we try to hold in as much moisture for these plants to use. Another thing it does is it does kind of reduce the amount of weeds that we'll get. Beneath that we have the soil that we've enhanced so these plants can get a good root system and that they can be healthy and grow well. Now this site, Hazel's Creek, we were fortunate that this is, was an agricultural site. It was used for pasture for many years and the soil was pretty well, it was in pretty good shape before we even came out here. Did talk about having grass here, turf grass. We talked about not only we'd have to water it through the summer, it has to be mowed and fertilized. And we felt this was a better use of our operations personnel. Um, coming out once a year to do some weeding um, checking the irrigation system, um, it's pretty much is all that's required. This is a pin foundation example that we have out here. It's a very simple structure and you can see here on the deck we're actually using the pin foundation as a support structure. So a pin foundation is considered a low impact development technique, a BMP, because it's a way to not disturb the soil during construction. These pin foundations can be used for structures for buildings, it can be used for patios, for decks, for boardwalks. And during construction, we don't have to do the over excavation, we don't have to do the over compaction so that the pore structure is limited. We just drive these pipes. How deep they go, 
how much is depending on what kind of structure you're supporting and the supporting soil underneath. So that geotechnical information is gathered and um, a structural design is performed to figure out how big these, how deep these need to be, where they need to be placed on your structure. By using this, we can maintain the soil structure. We don't over excavate, we don't over compact. So we're not adding any flow from, a, uh, from leaving the site. And that's really important for low impact development to have, to retain as much flow, the natural flow on the site. And what we have is the street that's adjacent to Hazel's Creek has got this curb cut, this opening here. We just let stormwater, the runoff from the road, come in and it comes right, right across here. The sheet flows in. Uh, we collect it here. It'll take any water, any sediments, anything that's gathered when we get enough of a storm. And from here it goes to our bioretention. We have these dry wells for lower flows. And as these get filled, it flows over into the bioretention where it will infiltrate.